It was about 8.30pm. While taking out the trash at work with a co-worker and roommate, a large dog approached us. It seemed to be galloping. It wasn't walking normally, like an animal should. Despite the many surrounding lights, the dog appeared to be entirely black. It was silhouetted just enough that you could see its muscle definition. I could see a slight reflection in its eyes. It seemed to lack a shadow. My roommate and I both expressed having different experiences and visions of the dog. When I initially saw the dog, I interacted saying, Oh, dog, in excitement. For me, it proceeded to sit entirely still on the cement, staring like a statue. What I saw was a large fluffy black dog, lazy ears, similar to a Newfoundland dog. My roommate expresses seeing the dog as a large, very muscular, aggressive looking black dog that stood rigid the entire time, staring like it wanted to attack. It was short haired, muscled and had pointed ears. I jokingly stated that the dog looked like a skinwalker, not really anticipating that anything could happen. Then we immediately felt a wake of dread fall over us. Something was wrong. We both saw the dog's jaw open, almost as if it was about to bark. We heard a distant yet extremely clear, high-pitched, come here. The dog immediately turned to take off. We turned around the corner. The creature was unreasonably far up the road for the short amount of time that it was not being observed. It was wobbling, crossing its paws, walking oddly. When it turned left around a corner, it seemed to nearly stand up on its hind paws, walking on two legs, just before passing around out of sight. The rest of the night was just as interesting. We had trouble with certain objects in slightly moving places, nudging a bit, settling. It quickly became more aggressive. But then, just as we were about to leave, we heard a loud and persistent knocking coming from the front of the store. We quickly went to our cars. On the drive home, I tried to blast music and ignore what I had just seen. I heard whispering coming from my back seat. I couldn't quite make out any words. It just sounded like whistling, almost. But get this. I saw a random antique claw foot bathtub on the left side of the road, in a field. It was certainly not there the day before, or even that morning on my drive there. The kicker? I was watching the sidelines of the road for animals and I almost certainly saw a buck. He was leaping out in front of the road a good 50 feet ahead. I slammed on my brakes, but when I got closer, it was merely a bush. Perhaps I was just paranoid, but this is all very concerning. I'm sometimes visited at night by apparently nothing, but definitely something. To explain, the events occur strictly at night while I'm trying to fall asleep, particularly when my wife is at work. I'll be trying to fall asleep when out of the blue, I feel the blanket compress along my back as if someone were crawling into bed with me. The sensation progresses from my feet all the way to my neck where it just stops. I can feel the compression of the blanket for as long as I stay still, but if I roll over or climb out, it goes away, usually for the night, but it does return on rare occasions. I feel no hostility from whatever it is, and it does feel particularly female, though I have no idea why. I have no reason to think it's female aside from my gut feeling telling me it is. I have no dead lovers. I don't think it's sleep paralysis. When it happens, I become 100% lucid with full control over my body. I also always open my eyes when this happens, and I've never seen anything, even when I've gotten the nerve to roll over and face whatever it was. This has happened to me for at least the last six years, but possibly longer. My family and I did previously live in an apartment that was very haunted, and the driving force for our leaving was several instances of finding scratches on our infant son in the morning and knowing he couldn't have scratched himself through his pyjamas. The thought of something having attached itself to myself or my wife seriously freaks me out, but I know it can happen. Even though I haven't felt any hostility since we left the apartment, 
It still freaks me out. What if it's the same entity just biding its time? I just don't know. And that's the worst of it. My old apartment was haunted. My wife and I both had separate experiences in that house. I can't speak to all of her experiences, but a few that stood out for me were, shortly after we moved in, my wife and I were in bed sleeping during the day, and I heard the sound of a kid saying, mommy, 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 from her side of the bed. I thought it was my stepson and rolled over to see what he wanted. When I rolled over, I saw a shadow from a child on all fours over the top of my wife. I blinked to clear my eyes of sleepiness, and it was gone. Something you should know about this apartment was that it was a house with two apartments divided between the top floor and bottom floor. I looked at both floors before choosing the bottom floor because it was bigger and had a basement. Anyway, a year or so later, one night I'm getting home from work and I look at the house and see a pale face looking out from the attic window. The upstairs apartment did have tenants at the time, but I know for a fact that the landlord had bolted the attic shut because I asked when I looked at the upstairs apartment. There were numerous other small incidents, the usual footsteps when no one else was around, seeing shadow people out the corner of your eye, random feelings of being watched and dread, but things really escalated when my wife got pregnant. Things started happening around her more often. When her belly started to show, she would sometimes wake up with scratches on it. Once, she swears some unseen force straight up knocked her down. But what really forced us to move was after we had my son. He would have random scratches on his body and after the first time we found them, we made sure he went to bed with mittens on because baby fingernails are razor blades in their own right. And we also made sure he was also wearing a onesie to protect him from getting scratched some other way. That was the last straw. We could tolerate the attacks on ourselves, but not the baby. We packed up and moved before his first birthday to a home we bought ourselves. The home is also haunted, but not in the malicious way, like the last, and that's another series of tales for the future. As we were leaving, we felt the obligation to warn the new tenants, but didn't want to look crazy either. There was a section of wood panelling in the basement, that you could pull off the wall to get access to the water main. I figured that any sufficiently curious renter would eventually pull that panel off to see what's behind it. I did. So I left a note where addressed to the next tenants taped to the inside of the panel, detailing what went on and warning them of what they may encounter. You may call me an ass for not telling them outright, but I didn't feel it was right to potentially scare off any would-be renters since our landlord was a good person and treated us well. My friend to visit her family for a few days. The first night, we took her car for a test drive after helping her dad with the car around 1 a.m. The city was built on Native American burial grounds. So most graves were dug up and dismantled so hauntings are common here and invites more bad hosts. Anyway, as her dad was talking about his experience with stuff here, he mentioned La Latuza, a witch from Mexican folklore that takes form of an owl. And as he started to talk about her, a giant owl swoops in front of us, nearly hitting the owl, and we all just shut up for a moment. Then we see another giant owl later on a sign in a residential area, and to confirm it was an owl, he pointed a flashlight at it, but refused to turn on again and again. When the owl flew away, it decided to turn on, and that's when we all agreed to go home. Later that night, I got high with my friend, and after a while, we went our separate ways. I'm in her brother's room playing Xbox, still pretty high. Her brothers leave downstairs while I'm there alone in the dark with the screen on. She's in the room next to me and texts me, Hey, are you upstairs by any chance? I say yes, why? Moments later, a black transparent figure slowly walks in front of the TV and with the blink of an eye, it's gone. I got scared, so I left to where my friend is at. I thought, man, maybe I'm tripping. 
She told me she heard footsteps upstairs when her brothers were already downstairs. I wasn't walking. Later, everyone is in the room with us, having a good time, when the youngest brother comes in, running upstairs, crying and scared. He saw a black transparent figure, face and all, try to reach out towards him, coming from the downstairs garage. Her dad had told us prior that the house has something that hasn't disturbed them like it did tonight at all. I just didn't want to believe it. We all slept in the living room together after because three of us confirmed we saw and heard something. Crazy night. I still kept going over though. As a child and young teen, I always had this feeling that something or someone was around me. Not unlike that feeling you get when you're asleep and someone is staring at you when you wake up. Maybe that's not the best description, but the actual feeling is not dissimilar. When I was young, I lived in a cul-de-sac that housed about six families, all of which were fairly young and had children around my own age. Most of us became quite close. I became very close with one particular family, and mostly besides my best friend, the mother of that family. We talked about things that in hindsight were probably not normal at that age, but not in the sense that it was obscene or threatening, it was just scary. Scary on a level that portrayed emotion wouldn't be able to be observed. It was emotional, and yes, at first, obviously verbal, yet something I can't quite describe with words. It started with me telling her of things I had seen. Nothing disturbing per se, but something I had learned to keep to myself in my early years. I'm still hesitating to word this to this day, but I'll do my best. From a young age, I always had this strange sense that there were people around me. I felt things and remembered things that I couldn't possibly by most standards remember, and I've creeped out my parents many times by doing so. They always chalked up to maybe seeing a photo or a video, but the absolute inexplicable they just chose to laugh off and disregard, which was fine by me, and still is to some extent, but recently I've become personally affected by these memories or thoughts. I'm not sure anymore. This brings me to the present day. As someone who is dreaming vividly and thinking they're seeing the very things I thought I saw and felt as a child, coming to fruition after many years of suppressing and denial. I'm so confused. I can't help but to keep thinking back to those discussions I had with the mother of my best friends. The words I heard, the children I saw in corners huddling and crying that were not really there. The intuitions that turned into reality and the fact that she told me I had psychic abilities and she could feel my energy, which I didn't understand then and wish I didn't now. All of it freaked me the fuck out. It does freak me out. I'm not sure why after many years of dedicated and deliberate su suppression, this is all flooding back into my mind with the force of a tsunami now, but all that I can say is I wish I could stop it. It feels like I'm going insane. Am I? When I was a little girl, I lived in a little house, though it seemed massive at the time, on a large piece of horse stable property in Holly, Michigan. It was a household belief that the place was haunted. It was also a household belief that the spirit was benevolent, but that didn't stop it from giving quite the scare. Dishes fell off counters, the front door closed by itself, and on one occasion, a row of porcelain dolls all stacked at different levels of shelving and surfaces fell like dominoes. When we decided it was haunted, there were seven of us there. Me, my sister, my dad, his girlfriend, and her three kids. But the girlfriend and kids had left, and my sister was spending the night with her friends. And my father and I were in two separate corners of the house. So maybe the ghost was shy. I had just turned off the lights and crawled into bed, shut my eyes, when I heard someone say my name. I opened my eyes to a pale, slender figure, with jet black hair crawling toward me. When I recall the figure, I only see two black holes for my eyes and two black slits for nostrils. I like it too much to Michael Jackson's skin suit in Scary Movie 3. It may have had distinguishable features, but I didn't commit them to memory. It seemed calm. It seemed it may be trying to say something to me, maybe even console me. As it reached toward me, 
but I panicked. I screamed and my dad busted into the room instantaneously and turned on the lights. Being he was on the opposite side of the house with two hallways in a living room to get through, I assume I was screaming before I'd actually realised. The figure had vanished and my dad and I slept in the living room that night. When I was there, I got tasked to help with housekeeping and cleaning rooms. I did a night shift in the ER, emergency room. Usually there's only one other person that actually works there to help when needed. For the first month, I didn't really realise anything out of the ordinary, except the feeling I was being watched. I didn't really think much about it because, well, I was in my military uniform cleaning rooms of people who got released or passed away. This one time, I felt that there was something more than just people watching me. When I was in a room, just me and I just had this weird type dread of being watched by something. While I was cleaning the room, it felt like there was someone there just in a corner, but I couldn't see them. Toward the end, right when I was about to leave, I felt extremely cold. Not like a weird chill, like a type of a death chill. It was such a weird feeling, something I had never felt before. After I left, I just felt so scared till I relaxed. I don't understand what could have caused it or how I got so cold in a matter of seconds. This also happened in the ER while I was by myself again. How fun. So in the hospital, all the soap and hand sanitizer are all motion activated. It started out as a slow night, about two rooms an hour. After about eight hours, I was nearing the end of my shift. I had one more room to clean. As I was cleaning, I started to have the feeling I was being watched. So I just ignored the feeling. Probably not the best idea, as you'll see. After about five minutes of feeling that I was being watched, I started cleaning the bed, which was the last thing I had to do. As I was cleaning, the soap dispenser went off, even though I was the only person there. I ignored it, as I was going to clean it before I left. Not even 30 seconds later, I heard footsteps in the bathroom. And being me, I decided to look to see if anyone was in there. As soon as I poked my head in, I got so cold and got instant goosebumps. So I left the room and I started cleaning a public bathroom for the last 30 minutes of my shift. As I was cleaning the bathroom, the towel dispenser just kept spitting out paper towels after paper towels. After that, I was done with my shift and left. The first experience I remember happened during summer break, after the first grade, also in my childhood home. The very first occurred in my childhood home that my father built in the mid-60s, before I was born. I'm not sure exactly what year. I sold it in 2016 after my mom passed, and I couldn't find the exact year it was built when I went to pull the deed. It was a three-bedroom ranch in a great neighbourhood. There were lots of kids my age and an awesome place to grow up small town in South Carolina near Myrtle Beach. My father passed that spring and my mother had a full-time job. She didn't like leaving me by myself. I have a brother that's nine years older and the couple next door were retired and they kept an eye out for me. This was the mid-70s and there was virtually no crime in this town, so it was relatively safe. On this day, my brother and mother were at work, but the neighbours were home. I was in my backyard playing football with my friends when nature called. I went inside our house to drop the kids off at the pool. While doing so, I clearly heard a woman's voice say my first name, followed by my first and last name. Like, Richard. Then a few seconds later, Richard Johnson. Not my name, but the same number of syllables. It was a pleasant voice with no urgency. It was melodic in tone, almost sung. It was somewhat unnatural. I'm not sure how else to explain it. It wasn't waffled. And it sounded like the woman was in the house. I remember thinking that it was weird and the voice wasn't a familiar one. Initially, I wasn't scared as I thought it could have been the neighbour. It wasn't unusual for people to drop by. Our home had lots of drop-in visitors. I quickly finished up my business and looked around the house. It was empty. I started thinking that I didn't hear the back door open before I heard it. Normally, I would have. 
The back door had a cheap storm door with a little hydraulic arm and spring that would creak and pop when it opened and closed. The front door was almost never opened and locked up tight. Now I'm freaking out. I went next door to ask my neighbour if she had come by. She said no and asked if someone was in our house. I told her no and it must have been the TV, trying to hide my fear and anxiety. I was positive the TV wasn't on. Also no radios or anything else. I didn't let her know I was freaking out inside because my mother was hesitant to let me stay home by myself as it was. If I had alarmed the neighbour, I'd be sent to daycare or relative's house. I knew this and didn't want that. Mom had already threatened this if I got into trouble and I wanted to spend the summer with my friends. There are possible explanations for this, such as an auditory hallucination, some other person stopping by, etc. I never had any auditory hallucinations before or since. Another neighbour or family member would not have come in and left so quickly. I was out of the restroom in less than a minute after hearing this. There simply wasn't enough time for anyone to get back to their vehicle and leave. Our driveway was long, with a circle around the front yard. My friends in the backyard didn't see anyone else go into my house. I never said anything else about this to anyone, and I just put it in the back of my mind. I just let it go, and went back to playing football. This is the first time I remember, and very mild compared to the others to come. I've had maybe a dozen throughout my life, and I'm middle-aged. I've never actually counted them. My experiences have been years apart. As I've gotten older, I believe that I'm somewhat sensitive to the other side, or however you want to define it. I don't claim to understand it. I believe in the spirit world and the possibility of interdimensional beings. Though I grew up in a Christian home, I'm not a religious person. I do not believe in organised religion. However, I do believe that there's something beyond this reality, whether it's a spirit world or anything else that we can't or don't comprehend fully. I've studied many religions, including the dark ones, as well as Wicca and Voodoo. I've done this out of curiosity mainly. I don't believe in them, for the most part. This encounter happened a few years after my first experience, where I heard a woman's voice calling my name. It had been a couple of years since my father passed. My mum had started dating a man she met at church that would soon become my stepfather. It was a warm summer Sunday night and I was home alone as I didn't want to go to the evening church service. I loved Sunday night TV and was watching my favourite shows. I was hungry and went to the kitchen to get a snack. I could easily see the TV from the kitchen table as our home had an open floor plan. Everything was good and I was enjoying the shows and having my snack at the kitchen table. Then the lights dimmed and flickered. It wasn't uncommon during this area to have brownouts in this area of South Carolina. This time was different though. The atmosphere in the house became heavy, dark and evil. It got really cold and I was immediately weirded out. The lights flickered for a minute or two and then went back to normal. Okay, weird, and I felt uneasy. I remember losing focus on the TV and being hyper aware of something or someone being with me. I tried to brush it off and continue to watch TV, but I could barely focus on it. A few seconds later, I saw a shadow figure out of my peripheral moving around the entrance of the hallway, to the right, and a door directly in front of me that looked into the unlit dark formal room. The hallway went to the back of the house where the bedrooms were. I'm spooked out big time, but I hesitantly go to investigate this shadow figure. I look down the long hallway formal room and bedrooms. Nothing there. There shouldn't. Couldn't have been anyone else in the house anyway. They would have had to enter through the back door located behind the den, through the mud room and past my line of sight. It couldn't have entered through the front door in the formal room. It was an oversized, heavy, solid wood door, secured by a bolt lock and difficult to open due to the frame swelling from the humidity. This door made a lot of noise when simply unlocking the bolt and definitely when opening it. We rarely used it. So it's not possible that someone entered the house without being seen or heard. I'm very spooked and uneasy 
but tried to convince myself that it was just a flicker of the power and I was imagining the shadow figure. I'd lost my appetite and went back into the den leaving my food on the table and started trying to watch TV. That heavy feeling had not left the house but I tried to ignore it hoping it would go away. A few minutes later I saw the shadow standing to my left in the kitchen out of the corner of my eye. As I turned to look at it it slowly faded. I'm now frozen with fear. The lights dim again and I hear a scraping noise from outside of the house which sounds like someone dragging a rake or something metal down the brick exterior walls. I noped right out of my house immediately and ran into my neighbour's backyard. I'm scared to be inside or outside of my house at this point. I'm terrified more than I ever have in my life. I don't feel safe in the neighbour's yard either but I'm a few hundred feet away from my house. My neighbours are not home and their house is completely dark. From where I'm standing, I can see into the den through a large picture window. The room is lit by one lamp and I can see shadows moving about. At one point, I see the shadow watching me through this window. This lasted for several seconds, it seemed like an eternity. It wasn't shaped like a person, but more like a tall dark void of empty nothing around three feet wide and over six feet tall. It went beyond the top of the window that was three feet tall, six feet wide, and the top was six feet off the floor. This entity didn't feel friendly. It felt angry and hostile. It oddly felt familiar though. A minute later, I see headlights coming down the driveway. It's my mom and stepfather to be. A sense of relief came over me and that heavy feeling dissipated. Almost immediately, the shadow disappeared and everything went back to normal. My mom sees me in the neighbor's yard and is immediately pissed that I'm outside. I incoherently try to offer up some kind of explanation, but I'm rambling gibberish. My mom being short-tempered says, just get your butt inside, there's nothing in there. I hesitantly did as told. When we got inside, she was not happy about the kitchen being in a complete mess. My food was scattered all around the table and floor. I didn't do that. I usually cleaned up after myself. I had no explanation and had given up on trying to explain what happened. I knew it would sound unbelievable anyway. I have no explanation for this experience, even after decades of research into the paranormal. Perhaps it was my father's spirit, angry about the presence of another man in the house he built. Or when my friends and I found a Ouija board in a closet and asked it a couple of questions. That's another story for later. This visitor or something similar would return again soon. The scraping noise would also return a few more times over the years. It's really great to tell these events after all these years. A short time before the encounter with the shadow entity, my friends and I were playing at my house. There were about four of us, I don't exactly remember. I had a lot of friends in my neighbourhood within three years of age. I was very young. We were bored and decided to play Monopoly or something. We had a closet full of board games. This was the late 70s. While digging through the games, we found a Ouija board. Not sure where it came from. It didn't just appear or anything like that. My father built the house and Parker Brothers made them and they could be purchased at most department stores. My older brother probably bought it, I don't know. I'd seen one on TV, so I kinda knew how to use it. My friends and I started asking questions and the planchette started slowly moving. They were dumb kid questions and I really don't remember them, except for one. Convinced that one of my friends was moving the planchette, I decided to ask something to prove whether it was real or not. Everyone swore they weren't moving it. The questions were mostly yes, no things and it moved with purpose. I didn't have a clue what my mother's age was, never had any reason to think about it and didn't care. I'm sure my friends could have cared less about it too, so that's what I asked. The planchette moved again, pointing to two numbers. My friends asked me, is it right? I didn't know, and they were like, Dan, why do you ask? I just said, I don't know. We said we were done and the planchette moved to buy. A little freaked and bored with it, we put it away. When mom got home, I asked, mom, how old are you? She told me, and the board was correct. 
This was an odd experience for a couple of reasons. I was so young, I didn't know or care. I'd never had a reason to wonder or care about this. My mother had me at a late age, so she was a good decade older than my friend's mothers. I was a little freaked out about this, but I really just found it strange. In the dream, it's always me, walking along a rural path, similar to that of the farms and land on the outskirts of my city. Everything is normal, except that it's night and there is fog. There is also no one on the street. Apparently, at the end of that path, there is always a group of people whose voices, distance, are always familiar to me. In fact, I think they are my friends, and sometimes, people I know from high school are with whom I interact daily. The strange thing is, is that as much as I hurry, I never manage to reach them. That's when the fog becomes denser and I lose sight of them. That's when it starts, when I get lost for not seeing more than 10 meters in front of me, and I have to shout to call them, but nobody answers me. The air turns cold and I run to a barn that I know is empty, only with an old tractor and an electrical pole. I climb to the top of the tractor to try to see them and also to be heard better, and she appears. First, it's like something I seem to see on the ground. Then I distrust and proceed to climb on the roof of the barn. Once there, I can see that it appears, as if crawling on the floor, a very thin woman, almost skeletal, with very long and tangled hair, completely naked. Then I climb a little more, until I pass the other side of the roof, where the light pole is. And suddenly, she appears without more than the top of that same roof and looks at my face, twisting her body, like screaming. That's when I see her up close and her body is rotten, almost grey, with huge eyes of a glowing green that is not natural. He lunges at me with a sort of howl, drooling, and I duck out of the way in time for him to hit the light pole and get a little, little electrocuted. I climb down the wood and ran. I wake up. This would be nothing more than a recurring nightmare, but now comes what is beginning to worry me. It's been several times that I seem to see it or it's present in my day to day in some way. The other day I was having a milkshake with my colleagues until they went to pay, just for a moment. And in that couple of minutes, I thought I saw her standing across the street, looking at me ecstatic. Yesterday, returning late through the neighborhood, there were no people on the street for a few moments, and there was a strange silence. Then a strange breathing caught my attention, and I looked towards the window of one of my neighbours. At first I thought it was her mother, an old woman peeking out. But then I noticed her long hair like a shadow, and suddenly a thin grey hand slammed down hard on the glass from inside the house. There are more strange situations, but those two are the most recent. What I find surprising is that it happens when nobody can verify me if they see something, or if it's just me who has the paranoia. I mentioned it to a friend and he told me to ignore it, that it would be nonsense. But the concern came when I was in the park with two friends and when they went to buy some sweets, I just watched a girl playing on a swing far away from me. That woman appeared behind the swing in the blink of an eye and the girl fell face down and fainted from how strong the blow was. Her mother and I ran to see how she was doing and she ended up taking her to a hospital. From that moment on, I'm kind of scared. About two or three years ago, when I was a gerontology student in Venezuela, I spent five days a week at my grandmother's house and then returned home on weekends. The issue is that at the time, Venezuela had a critical situation in relation to pensions for the elderly, who had to get up early at about 2 or 3 a.m. in my city to stand in line at the bank. They even hoped that at some point during the day, afternoon or even evening, they would be able to receive the money and return home. I apologize for telling these details, but I consider them necessary so that you can understand where I was at the moment that this paranormal event occurred. It all began on a Tuesday at about 8pm. 
My grandmother told me that she would be leaving with a friend to go to the pension at about 3.30 or 4 a.m. on Wednesday. So in case I woke up and did not find her at home, I would already know where she was. Since this was not the first time this has happened, I decided to set my alarm on my cell phone to go off around 7 a.m. so that I would be up by 8 a.m. to complete my chores for the day. I spent a quiet night without any problems, but the weirdness started first thing when I woke up. But at that moment, I had no idea it was going to be a weird event. The alarm went off at 7 a.m. and I woke up completely. I'm more difficult to get out of bed than to wake up. Then the first thing I see is that the bathroom next to my room is with the light on. I noticed that because I leave a little open the door of my room because the air conditioning was very powerful. So the light of the bathroom or the hallway would be easy to observe. Then, not only was the light on, but I could hear the sound of my grandmother's makeup case being handled. At that moment, I was a little surprised, thinking that my grandmother had not gone to the bank. But I didn't give it much importance. I thought that surely she had returned for breakfast because someone was watching her place in line or something like that. Of course, I didn't dare go out to say good morning because of the same laziness of having to get out of bed. So I turned to the opposite direction of my bedroom door and started to check my cell phone. The noise continued until it stopped. I heard my grandmother touch the button to turn off the bathroom light. I heard how she closed the bathroom door and I heard how she went down the stairs. Everything went on as normal and I got out of bed at about 8.30, had breakfast and had a quiet morning. My grandmother came home around 12.30 noon. Everything was normal until I asked her why she had left so late and not in the early morning as she had said. My grandmother looked at me with a confused face and told me that she had been out of the house since 4am. Normally, one who lives a normal life and has to live experiences like these can end up being more than scary. However, this was a little surprising for me because I had never had an experience like this, but I did have a little history with weird experiences. Of course, after explaining this to my grandmother, she was more than surprised than me, as expected. Unfortunately, an experience of this type did not happen again. Although strange things happened, but it was not something frequent, but something that happened suddenly and already. But I must say that I never liked that house because I feel that it has something that makes it uncomfortable for me. But that's history for another time. Oddly enough, I remember that we seemed to have gotten the same spot we had gotten the previous year. At the top of the hill, not far from the path that leads down to the lake itself, where there was a dock. When we got there, my brother was excited to get down to the lake and start fishing right away. I stayed near my parents while they set up our camper and camp. I remember seeing a walking stick insect for the first time. Being a bit afraid and amazed by this strange bug and playing with it and some other insects. Fast forward a few hours and my mother told me to head down to the lake and get my brother for dinner. I was walking down the path, almost to the lake, when suddenly I heard my brother yell, Son of a bit! Then I heard a splash. I ran down the path and found my brother in the lake, up to his knees, bending over trying to grab something in the water. Later I found out that after hours of fishing, he finally caught a fish. And just as he was pulling it up, it fell off the hook and back into the water. He was determined not to lose the fish, so he jumped in the lake to catch it with his bare hands. He claims that he was able to grab the fish, but it shot out of his hands like a wet bar of soap shoots out of your hands when you grab it. A while later, after dinner, we were all sitting around the campfire roasting hot dogs or marshmallows, having fun and talking, when something came walking out of the fire. It walked or looked exactly like a turtle, only it seemed to be made of burning coals. It looked like a glowing, red-hot burning log, but in the shape of a turtle, and it was walking. Being the small child and animal lover that I was, I jumped up to go help this poor creature. One of my parents grabbed me and held me back, knowing I would burn myself trying to save it. My whole family saw it. We were all surprised and confused about what it was and how it could still be alive. My older brother got up, walked over to the turtle that was still walking at this point, 
He took a stick and struck it hard right in the middle of its shell. It immediately shattered into pieces. Of course, I was devastated that my brother had just killed it. My parents held me and kept me from going over to it. In the morning, I went out to look at the shattered remains and body of the animal, and all I found were a bunch of cold coals, like burned chunks of wood from a fire. I didn't find a shell, bones, or burnt animal at all, just black coals. Like someone had taken hot coals out of the fire and placed them where my brother had killed the turtle creature slash thing. I've talked to my family about this since then. Surprisingly, only my brother seems to have a vague memory of it happening. I don't know how my parents don't remember this strange occurrence. This was not a spiritual manifestation, or hallucination, or illusion, etc. This is an actual event that happened. Has anyone ever heard or seen of such a thing before? So far, I haven't met or talked to a single person, outside my family that witnessed it, that has ever heard of or experienced anything remotely like this. Even if it was a living turtle, how could it be completely burned up and still survive long enough to walk out of the fire, the distance of at least three feet, before my brother shattered it? In 2018-2019, I was dating this guy, and I would always sleep over at his place on the weekends. I would sleep on the right side of the bed, and he would sleep on the left side. One night, I woke up because I guess I could feel something staring at me. I opened my eyes and my boyfriend was sitting on the edge of the bed, to my right, just staring at me and smiling, but the way he looked was so creepy. Nothing different about how he looked, but the only way I can explain it is evil. Like a super big smile and wide eyes just staring at me, but not saying anything. This guy would always mess with me and joke around, so I thought he was just trying to freak me out or something. I was about to ask him what he was doing, like the words were about to come out, when all of a sudden, I felt his body laying down, asleep, and heard him breathing deep to the left of me. I immediately knew this thing that was staring at me was not my boyfriend. I stopped myself from saying anything or even looking at my actual boyfriend lying next to me. I was still looking right at whatever this thing was that I had thought was my boyfriend. I had an overwhelming sense of just feeling like I was in danger, and if I said anything or looked at my boyfriend to my left, it would know that I knew it wasn't my boyfriend, and something bad would happen. All of this was going through my mind super fast, like it was maybe three seconds after I realised my boyfriend was actually asleep to my left, that I just quickly grabbed the comforter, closing my eyes and threw it over my head while turning to my life, grabbing hold of my real boyfriend. And I just stayed like that until I fell back asleep. I've had sleep paralysis before, a couple times, and I know how it feels. This was not sleep paralysis. I still remember every detail so vividly and have no explanation for it. I've always believed in the paranormal, alternate dimensions, and extraterrestrials. I just generally believe that the universe is extremely vast, and humans can't possibly mentally grasp everything out there, and anything is possible. However, I've never been very sensitive to anything like that. I've experienced spooky things, sure, but nothing too extreme for me to explain it away. Picture frames that have been hung for years, dropping to the floor, seemingly out of nowhere, my childhood home, hearing unexplained footsteps, etc. All things I could dismiss. I've also seen several UFOs on the same night. Let me know if you'd like to hear about that. But about a year ago, something happened that I've never been able to explain, and I can't get it out of my head. I live in central Arkansas, and was staying in a rented house with my stepsister and her boyfriend. I was 21. It was one floor, three bedrooms and two bathrooms. The living room and dining room were at the front of the house, connecting to the kitchen. Then there's a short hallway going down to all three bedroom doors, at the back of the house. It was about midnight, and my stepsister and her boyfriend both had work early in the morning, and were asleep. 
I was still awake, but was getting ready for bed. I also would like to note that I had not been drinking, smoking, or watching anything scary. I'd been chilling in my room watching TV, and was definitely not in a paranoid state of mind. I remember thinking my room was too warm for me to go to sleep. It was May, and Arkansas was already hot for the summer. I decided to turn my TV off, and go to turn the thermostat down a little bit. The thermostat is located in the little hallway, just a few feet from my bedroom door. When you step into the hallway from the bedrooms, you can clearly see into the living room. We had a sliding glass door where you can see into the backyard, and a motion sensor light on the back porch. We would not only lock the sliding door, but also have a pole wedged into it from the inside, so it will not open unless you move the pole. When I stepped into the hallway and made just a couple steps towards the thermostat, the motion light out was back on and I could clearly see two people in the living room. They looked like they were facing each other on the couch, or just crouching in front of the couch. They were backlit from the outdoor light, so I couldn't clearly see faces, just their outline. At this point, my first thought was that my stepsister and her boyfriend were fooling around in the living room. It was completely dark apart from the outdoor light, no TV on or anything, and for some reason, I just thought they were in there to have sex or something. Doesn't make much sense in retrospect, but that was my original thought. I immediately felt embarrassed and loudly said, Oh shit guys, I'm sorry. Then the two figures who were originally facing each other darted their heads towards me. It was very quick, almost as if I startled them. Thinking I had walked in on them and scared them, I quickly turned around and returned to my room, forgetting about the thermostat. I was kind of giggling to myself, still not feeling scared, just embarrassed and I thought it was funny. I turned my light off and went to lay down in bed. As I laid there, I was expecting to hear them going back into their room or laughing or something. Some sort of reaction. But nothing came. The house was so silent now without my TV on. I laid there for about five minutes, then started to get worried. I decided to call my stepsister to confirm what just happened. I assume her phone was on silent because her room was right next to mine and I didn't hear a ring. When she didn't answer, I called her boyfriend. His phone rang and he finally answered. It was clear that I had just woken him up because of how sleepy his voice sounded. I asked him if they were in the living room and he said no, that they were both asleep. And he sounded annoyed that I was calling him at midnight, knowing he had to be up around four. Still not even thinking about ghosts, I told them that I just saw two people in the living room and I think people had broken in. He woke my sister up told her what was going on and they both grabbed something from the room to use as a weapon. All I had was a pocket knife but I grabbed it and we all decided to leave our rooms at the same time and step into the hallway. He walked ahead of us and the three of us made our way into the living room turning on lights as we walked. There was nothing. The pole was still wedged into the sliding door from the inside. The deadbolt and lower lock on the front door were still locked as were all of the windows still being shut and locked. Nothing appeared out of place. They assumed I was high or had been drinking or something, or maybe just saw jackets hanging on the coat hooks. This experience still shakes me up to think about. I stand by there being absolutely no way I could have mistaken a jacket or a shadow for people, because when I spoke, the two figures had both quickly turned and faced me. The upper deadbolt on the front door could only be locked from the inside. There was no keyhole for it on the outside and no way for someone to leave and lock it behind them. There's also no way someone could leave throughout the sliding door and replace the pole on the inside that kept it closed. I've never experienced like this before or since. I'm certain now that what I saw was otherworldly and not intruders. Nobody believes me though. I'm 23 now, but I was 17 when this story took place. My grandfather was very clearly nearing the end of his days, so he wanted to be with him before he passed away. So my family visited him in Tennessee for Thanksgiving. On the day we were leaving, I woke up feeling sick. My family lives fairly close to Los Angeles, so it was a long ride. 
And by the time we landed, I was feeling pretty awful. Being in an environment 30 degrees colder than what I'm used to didn't help either. On our first night there, we stayed at the house of my mom's old college friend. It was an old house that she had just bought and moved into. She was telling my mom about how old it was and why she ended up buying it and whatnot during the car ride. But I was feeling so groggy that I wasn't absorbing any of it. When we finally got there, I could see what she meant by old. It looked like a Victorian area house and had that extremely narrow hallways that those old houses tend to have. When we went inside, I felt a really oppressive energy immediately surrounding me. I have anxiety, and being in a new, unfamiliar place will often trigger it. So I assumed that's all it was and didn't really pay much attention to it. Instead, I decided to just go to bed, despite it only being around 8. I just felt terrible and wanted the day to be over. I slept on the couch in the living room. Initially, I had a lot of trouble getting to sleep. My head was killing me and I felt like my entire body was being weighed down, which I attributed to being sick and exhausted. I managed to fade in and out of sleep throughout the night. Later though, sometime around 5am, I woke up to see someone else there. At the foot of the couch, there was a large semicircle shaped window that perfectly framed a street lamp outside. Standing under the street lamp was a girl with long brown hair, and she looked terribly ill. She had dark circles under her eyes and looked pale as a sheet. She was barefoot and was wearing an old looking white nightgown. Not old as in old and worn, but old as in antique, if that makes sense. She was just standing out there, staring at me through the window and mouthing something to me over and over again. It was windy and leaves were blowing around, but her hair and gown didn't move at all in the breeze. In addition to that, it must have been horrendously cold outside, but she didn't seem to be reacting at all. She just kept mouthing the word to me. Of course, I couldn't hear her, and in my sleepy, sick stupor, I said, What? I can't understand you. Her voice then responded to me, although it's hard for me to describe where it came from. It felt like it was coming from the left side of my head, but behind me at the same time. Although it didn't feel like it was coming from anyone in the room with me, but rather like it was coming from inside my brain. The voice said, she's saying gossamer. It's good for fevers. She's trying to help you. I got really scared at this and I asked why. She doesn't know me. Why is she out there? Why does she want to help me? Then suddenly, as if in the blink of an eye, I could feel the dark figure of the girl who was outside just a second ago, standing next to the couch, leering over me. The light in the room was coming from behind her, so she looked like a dark shadow person. Leaning over me, she whispered, It's okay. You're going to be alright. I immediately woke up, and I felt absolutely terrible. I was extremely disoriented as well, because I remembered waking up and seeing the girl outside the window and couldn't figure out why I had just woken up again. I tried to get up and tell my mom that I needed help, but as soon as I got up, I had a hard time walking, and once I got to the door of my bedroom, my parents were in, I collapsed to the floor and pawed at the door, calling for my mom. When she came out and found me on the floor, she took me into the bathroom and sat me down. Everything was starting to get very hazy, and when my mom was trying to get ibuprofen or something, I apparently passed out. The girl was with me again. Only this time, she was behind me, pulling me down into the deep, deep ocean. My first instinct told me that she was trying to drag me down to hell. My mom later told me that I was having a seizure at this point. When I came to it, I remember telling my mom that I felt really, really bad. She tried to help me get me up and back to the couch. But on the way over, I blacked out again and had another seizure on the floor. I vaguely remember hearing my mom yelling to my dad for help, but it's hard to piece it together. I had never had a seizure before in my life, so it's not like this was a common thing for me either. The entire time, I felt like the girl from earlier was trying really hard to take me with her, like she wanted me to succumb to illness. When I finally got back to the couch with the help of my dad, my fever immediately broke. I started sweating like crazy, 
and suddenly felt loose and relaxed. As if I was at ease after the whole ordeal. I no longer felt like the girl was there with me and honestly, I was so exhausted that I wasn't even thinking about it. My mom stayed with me until I fell back asleep and I was fine the next morning. I was still a bit sick the rest of the time, but nothing compared to the first night. Logic tells me that it was probably a fever dream, but the fact that I immediately felt something wrong when I stepped foot in that house, and that I had two seizures after the encounter with that girl, leads me to believe that it was something else. I'm not sure that it was a ghost because, to be honest, it felt more like she was an angel that could tell I was sick and was trying to take me to hell with her. I don't think she was trying to help me, like the voice in my head claimed she was. I think she was trying to kill me. I've never felt closer to death in my life. I've never told my parents about this experience for fear of ridicule, and I figure that I'll never be back to that house anyway, since my mom's friend has since relocated once again, so there isn't much of a point. I just hope that I never encounter whatever that girl was again. I'll start off by saying, I'm a CNA and I used to work at a shitty nursing home. I always worked a 3 to 11 p.m. shift, but this one night in the winter, there was a storm. It wasn't too bad, but no one was showing up for the next shift the 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. shift. So before the end of my shift, people were being mandated to stay, and I was one of them. It came to the end of my shift. I did my normal rounds and was about to start some cleaning duties. When my supervisor came up to me and told me I was switching places with another CNA, which I kind of was okay with, but whatever. There I was sent to and had one other CNA. Like I said, shitty place. So I had to do my rounds again to make sure my hall was all good. When I grabbed my clipboard, I noticed a woman at the end of the hall. So I decided I'll just start at the end of the hall so I can check on this woman first. I had asked her if there was anything wrong and introduced myself. Her reply was only, couldn't sleep. So I asked her if I could do anything, but she never responded. So I just started my rounds. As I came out of the first room, I realized she wasn't there anymore. So I decided to speed up on checking people to try and find these women. About halfway down the hall, I was heading out of the room and to my surprise, she was standing there in the doorway. I jumped back and slightly yelled from getting scared. Luckily, I didn't disturb anyone. I began asking her where she was and where she wanted to go, thinking maybe after her little walk, she'd be tired. She only answered with short answers. Yes, no, sure. I asked where her room was, 134, which wasn't on my side and she was quite a bit from the room. So I took her there and the room was weirdly cold and empty. I asked if she was cold and tucked her in and that was that. Later on, me and the other CNA were called in for the beginning of the shifts meeting. When the phone rang, it was room 134 asking for me. With that being said, I told the nurse about the lady being off and her little trip around the unit and asked why her room alone was so cold and empty. He answered with, there's no one in room 134. That woman passed away two nights ago. I laughed saying, no way. I tucked her in and had conversations with her. Stop joking around. He showed me her documentation of her passing and then her empty room. I couldn't even fathom that that had actually happened. It's still a huge shock to me. So again, the nursing home wasn't very good and wasn't legal with a lot of things. By the time I became a CNA, I was 18, but I've been working there for a year already. So I was pretty young and a lot of people would just tell me, you know, this probably isn't good for you, which little was like I can do it. But anyway, I worked with a woman who didn't like me, which was because I was so new. I was used to everything by the books. And I'd say like, we can't do that or we have to do it step by step. And because she was so close with our charge nurse, he wasn't fond of me. The one day I had said something 
and the nurse didn't want to deal with it. And had sent me over to a unit that was short staffed. I helped out over there and after our shift change meeting, the nurse on the unit was like, oh my God, you're here today. And I explained why. She then replied with, I'd love to keep you here, but your unit is actually the short one. I'd get in trouble for keeping you. So I went back, answered the call lights, and then it was dinner. My charge nurse sent me to a room to feed a bed-bound resident. But during the meeting I wasn't there for, his diet was changed and wasn't updated on our dietary sheets. Now to keep in mind this resident has been in the hospital and isn't from my part of the unit. And because I was so new, I didn't really know wrong from right. So I fed him a few bites and was paged into another room for help. I came back and the guy was choking. Within the week, he died because of aspiration. I was so upset and blamed it on myself. Every time I went into that room, it always felt like I was being watched. There was a big mirror in the room and you could see the hallway from. And I always would see someone walk in, but no one was ever there. It happened a lot. Then I had this recurring dream of this little boy who I've never seen before. And would ask, how's my brother? And would always tell me, I forgive you. Then one day, I found a picture of this boy, the one in my dreams. And well, it was the man who I blamed myself for his passing. I then looked for his brother who was on a difference and made it a thing. I was just normally checking up on him. A month later, the man came to me in my dreams and told me he's happy now and thanked me for caring for his brother. That was the end of hearing from that man. After he said that though, it was like a huge weight was lifted off me. I was about 15 at the time of this, and my friend 16 at the time. I used to go to this house barn after school. She would go every day to muck the stalls to work off the board for her horse to stay there. It wasn't a huge barn. Sorry for all the details, but it pertains to the story. It has probably 16 stalls, but maybe 12 horses actually boarded there. The building was like a straight line, with the front entrance pointing towards the road, and the other end pointed towards the paddocks. It was easy to know if someone pulled up, because the entrance was literally right next to the road and car headlights would shine through the whole barn. Anyways, me and my friend, I'll call him Mandy, were sitting in the tack room with the door open, waiting for my dad to pick us up. This was in the winter in New Hampshire, and it gets dark by like 3.30 or 4 during that time, so it was pretty dark out, besides some lights in the barn. We're just sitting there talking, when suddenly I hear someone yell my name. Hannah? Like a question. I didn't say anything about it for about 10 seconds when Mandy said, did someone just call your name? I knew I wasn't crazy then. I said yes, and we both peeked out the tack room door. The voice sounded exactly like my dad, but there were no headlights in the driveway, and we were the only ones there. I called my dad, and he was still 20 minutes out. I want to add earlier in the day, we were bringing the horse in from the paddocks. And this horse was like 25 years old and bomb-proof as hell. He refused to go inside, to the point he actually knocked Mandy over and ran back out. It took 10 minutes to get him in. We both have wondered for years what this has meant. It's my one and only encounter with the paranormal, and honestly, now that it's been almost 10 years... When I was younger, I was super into all things paranormal. I used to love watching horror films, tried Ouija boards, going to haunted houses, and of course, telling ghost stories. It wasn't until I was 13 that strange things actually started happening to me personally, and that fascination shifted into a slight fear of the unexplained. Back in the day, my parents used to work in the city, so most mornings, it would just be me, my sister, and I left to get ready for school alone. One morning, my sister, two years older, and I were downstairs on the main floor when we heard it. The faint yet familiar sound of my sister's music box playing in her bedroom. Instantly fearful, 
my sister and I somehow still managed to build up the nerve to investigate. Back to back, we began walking up the stairs. As soon as we made it to her doorway, the music came to a halt. The tiny bear atop her music box was now motionless, facing us with a seemingly innocent smile. My sister and I hadn't heard that small tune in years. Unsettled, we stood there in the doorway for a moment, or just until the phone rang and startled us out of our confusion. My sister answered, and we were both relieved to hear the sound of my mom's voice on the other line. As she began explaining what had just happened to my mom, she slowly raised her hand to the point at the wall in front of her. Did you just see that? Something, someone, just went through the wall, she said, her voice shaking. She genuinely looked terrified. Now, just to clarify, I've always been fascinated by the supernatural, but doubted that my sister was able to actually see a ghost. As fascinated as I was by the idea, I don't think it would happen like that, 8am in the daylight. I didn't think it did happen. So as I was convinced my sister was just playing a prank on me, I begged her to stop so we could just leave for school. Insisting that she saw something and unwavering from that fact, she convinced me to follow her into the adjacent room to hers, to see if there was actually something there or not. In the next room was a spare bedroom with a closet on the side, opposite my sister's room. I huffed and walked toward the closet, yanking the door open as I started to lose my patience for the whole thing. As I opened the doors, however, they began to slowly inch closed immediately after my release of the handles. Confused, I closed the closet and surely enough, it would slowly reopen. Whatever I did, the closet would react in reverse. I'd open it, it'd close and vice versa. My skin crawled and my sister and I ran out of the house. This particular instance was several years ago back when I used to have a math tutor in high school. Once a week, every Friday after school, I'd have a tutoring session at the library by my house. It started at 3.30 and class would let out around 3, so I was often early. Before my session one afternoon, I went to the washroom and noticed a woman go into the last stall. When I exited my stall to wash my hands, I noticed the last stall was vacant, but I also hadn't heard the woman leave. Thinking I was losing my mind, I shook it off and left to meet my tutor. After my session, it was about an hour later and I was walking home, when I started to sense that I wasn't alone. It felt as though someone was walking about five paces behind me, but I never felt the need to check. Subconsciously, I think I knew it wasn't really someone there. I made it home and, because I'm a weirdo, stood behind my brother in the garage as he was working at our workbench, trying to freak him out. After not getting the reaction I wanted, my brother several years older would take a bit to actually scare him. I entered my house. Upon entering, I started noticing a woman standing in the back corner of each room I entered, or passed by. She would just be standing there, motionless and expressionless. For whatever reason, I wasn't actually afraid at the time, but rather curious. I went back downstairs to explain this all to my brother, so he could tell me I was just seeing things. I began explaining this person I kept seeing, and as I began describing her, my brother started to nod, and started asking questions about what she looked like. I instantly got goosebumps over my whole body, and a chill went down my spine as he, in great detail, described the same exact woman. I had seen all afternoon. I stood there speechless as my brother's face fell and he asked, why do you think I didn't turn around in the garage earlier? I thought it was her. Not that I've ever mentioned it to my brother since, but I'm almost certain neither of us saw her again 